Jared Poland. Froknowsphoto.com. And I've been getting a lot of requests for comment on Tony Northrup's video where he says JPEG versus RAW, why I've been shooting JPEG more. Now, you all know that I shoot RAW. I wear it on my shirt. I wear it on my wristbands. I wear it even on the underwear that I wear that says I shoot RAW. And I'm not going to show it to you right now, but it's true. I do have that. So, Yes, I'm going to comment on quotes directly taken from Tony's video, as well as other statements that he made in those videos, and I'm gonna give you my opinion and take on everything. Now, I am a big proponent of pushing RAW out there, and there's lots of reasons for that, and we're gonna to get to those as I go through the quotes that Tony has. So let's start with this one. RAW files are big and are slow to process. It took 24 hours to get everything imported into Lightroom. So my first question here is how many pictures did you take? Now part of the problem when people start shooting RAW is that they take way too many photos and don't realize that they need to process each of the Keeper files. So the more you shoot, of course it's gonna take longer to process them. We all know the RAW files are larger, so yes, they take up more space, but that this notion that it took 24 hours to get them into Lightroom, I just can't buy that. I think that's exaggerating quite a lot because unless you took 20,000 photos and tried importing those, then I could see having an issue, but I've taken 800, 900 photos, 1,000 photos with the Nikon D5 RAW files and imported them into Lightroom and got started working almost right away as it processed in the background. And, and with Lightroom, the new Lightrooms that have come out, they are much faster than the older Lightroom. So I don't buy this argument uh, one bit other than RAW files are much larger takes up more hard drive space and your memory cards will run out faster. Come on, Tony, it's not 1996. And in fact, Ken Rockwell just sent me a two-way page and he wants his argument back. Now, we know that RAW files are larger. They take up more space, but also memory cards have gotten larger. Hard drives have gotten larger. And yes, storage is still one of those concerns that people have, but large hard drives for most companies are really inexpensive to have at home on your desk. I even have Backblaze, which is 50 bucks a year for unlimited storage of my RAW files. And then I pay almost 500 bucks a year to Amazon Cloud Storage to have all of my RAW files stored up in their cloud. Now you may be saying, well, that's a lot of money to spend, but you're looking at images going back 16 years. That's 16 years of raw files that I'm storing up in the cloud. I've got Drobos, I have Synology machines, I've got external hard drives, portable hard drives. I have hard drives all over the place where I store four or five terabytes of images. And yeah, that's 16 years of images and some people have a lot more. But when I first started shooting RAW, you're looking at a 4.1 megapixel D2H back then. So as hard drives gotten larger, as memory cards have gotten larger, it's not, this is not an argument that I can buy into at all. This is the reason I recommend most beginners shoot RAW. Whereas when you get more experience, you can actually start shooting JPEG more and more because you don't always need that margin of error in there. So that quote came right after Tony was bestowing how amazing RAW files were. He kind of contradicted the entire point of the video by sitting there saying, RAW files are amazing. They do all of these great things. And then he recommends that beginners shoot RAW before they shoot JPEG. And honestly, most beginners are afraid of RAW because they don't know how to edit files. They don't know what to do with the RAW files. They don't know what programs to use. And so when I recommend people just starting out, I recommend that you shoot RAW plus JPEG. And I tell them, store those RAW files for the future when you know what you're doing with them and when you understand that you can actually pull more data out of them. Now, Tony makes the whole point for shooting RAW. Yes, shoot RAW because there's more data, but I don't buy anymore that this this whole thing why people shoot raw is because they can't get it right in camera that is an old stupid argument pros shoot raw because of all the reasons that you just bestowed upon us by saying how amazing raw files are why there's so much data and how you can do so much with that file then this is all coming from a guy who prides himself on making super technical arguments and reviews and side-by-side -side comparisons while pixel peeping on the raw file. If he really thought about this, then maybe he would just take all the JPEG files and pixel peep all day on those. But no, he's pixel peeping on the raw files because that's why you buy a camera is to shoot raw, to get all of that data. JPEG should be limited more to experts who feel like they can nail the perfect exposure. 
Now I know this is similar to the question right before, but the reason I bring this up is that Tony's talking about experts that uh, they know they can nail the exposure every time, so that's why they shoot JPEG, right after he just showed us three RAW files where he missed the exposure and brought it back in the RAW file to save the images, all while telling us how amazing RAW files are. It's not just about getting it right in camera. It's all of the extra details and ep I don't need to I don't need to go back into that. We'll get to that later on, but this video keeps contradicting itself, especially when Tony is flip-flopping saying raw files are great, but JPEGs are this, but raw files are great. So let's keep moving on. JPEG files are also great for casual photos where it's nothing serious and if the picture doesn't turn out perfect, it's not a big deal. My response to this one is why do we spend all the money on these cameras and lenses in the first place? If every photo you are taking isn't that big of a deal, then why don't you just take out your cell phone and start taking photos with that? Because if it's not, like I don't set out to go out and, and not take interesting pictures. And yeah, there's snapshots that you take. I may just take those with my phone or I'll take them with my DSLR. But I don't sit there and go, well, this isn't gonna be an important photo. I might as well just shoot it in JPEG. I just think that's the wrong mentality to have. If you're shooting serious action where you might need to shoot as many frames per second as possible continually, and you're shooting a thousand pictures, JPEG is perfect for that because it's going to let your camera go fast. This is another terrible argument. One, don't shoot so many photos. Don't overshoot and sit there and spray and pray. But two, almost every new camera today, even the most basic of basic cameras, can shoot 20, 30 RAW files in a row before you ever outrun the buffer. And on those basic beginner cameras, they're shooting three, four, five frames a second, which means you're shooting for three, four, five, six, eight seconds in a row to outrun the buffer. It's just not a, it's just not an excuse that I buy into and I just that's not a reason to shoot JPEG. And onto the sports thing, I know a lot of people sit there and say, "Well, I shoot sports and I need to transmit fast and I need to get stuff out there. I shoot sports in raw. Everything I shoot, I shoot in raw. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, shoot raw so you have the raw file, shoot JPEG small so you can transmit those quickly, or a lot of cameras can convert the raw file quickly to a JPEG, almost instantly, and then a lot of programs like Photo Mechanic can give you and spit out a JPEG to transmit right away if you need that as well. But I know Sports Illustrated shooters, sorry, I know Sports Illustrated shooters who shoot the Super Bowl, who shoot the World Series, who shoot in raw but they also shoot JPEG if they need to so they can transmit it, but they always have the raw file to go back. And I will not buy the argument that you will outrun the buffer and that's a reason to shoot JPEG. That's a reason to stop spraying and praying and get better at capturing the moment. You should only be taking bursts of one second. Or I could never see sitting there holding the, the shutter down for a burst of action that lasts more than a second and a half or two seconds or just a second. It just, there's not a lot of action out there that just happens and continues to happen for 10 seconds in a row. At that point, you might as well just shoot video. Raw files are generally better for beginners because if they make a major mistake with the exposure, they're better able to recover it. See, the problem with this statement is that beginners have no clue what they're doing with raw files. What they do is they get it into the computer and they go, I can't open this, what am I supposed to do? And they get discouraged. That's why I try to educate people when they just start out and say, look, I don't have a problem if you just shoot JPEG straight up while you're learning. But I would recommend that if you can figure it out, shoot RAW plus JPEG. Put those RAW files away for another time when you finally learn how to open them up, you have a program that can open them, and you have a better understanding how to edit them. So at least when you're starting out, yes, yes, absolutely, if you shoot RAW, you do have a better chance of bringing the file back if you make a mistake, and it's a great learning tool because you can get better images. But that's not a reason to tell beginners just to shoot RAW because they don't know what to do with the files. They need to be educated first in order to know what to do with the raw files. So the recommendation is starting out, shoot raw plus JPEG, save the raw files until you know what you're doing with them, and then you're gonna be much happier when you blew that shot and six months down the road, you're like, oh, I now know how to bring the raw file back.
Raw is also what I would always shoot for any sort of important shots. See, this is just another poor statement. I don't go out to take photos and think, well, I'm not gonna take important shots today. When I go out to create images, I'm going out to capture the moment and it could be the most important shot I ever took. Now, of course you're gonna take certain snapshots and you just shoot those and you get them out of the way, but you don't go out to photograph and think that, well, you know, I'm not gonna shoot anything important today, so I, I just, I'll just shoot JPEG because nah, it's not gonna be important. You don't know what's gonna be important until it's, after, until it's important. If you shoot raw, buy those more expensive cards because you will benefit from it. So I absolutely agree that you should buy more expensive cards, but I think everybody should have better cards in their camera. You don't spend all this money on cameras, lenses, and accessories to have your photos fail because your memory card was a crappy one and crapped out on you because you bought some knockoff China brand that was $7 for 64 gigs and you're all of a sudden it didn't work or it went corrupt. So the recommendation to anybody is make sure you're buying a quality memory card that is faster because if you're shooting raw, you want to be able to transfer that data quicker. So you need a faster transfer rate for that particular card. So this one isn't a direct quote, but this is the gist of what he was saying. He says, if you have a camera that takes two cards, shoot raw to the faster card and JPEG to the slower card. Again, I don't agree with that statement. Now, what Tony was talking about in his video was saying that certain cameras have two memory card slots where one slot may be faster than the other slot. Now, yes, that's the point, but I would not shoot raw to the faster slot and JPEG to the slower slot if I have two memory card options in a camera. The point of two cards in a camera is redundancy. So if card one fails, you have card two as a backup. So if you just shoot raw to one and JPEG to the other and the raw fails, well, if you're Tony, you're all right because you get your exposure right every time and you have JPEG, so perfectly fine. But for, for most people out there, if you have two cards, you bought a camera that has the option for two card slots. Put two memory cards in there, shoot RAW and JPEG to both. If you want to just shoot, if, if, if you're looking to shoot JPEG, put it on the same card. RAW plus JPEG. Then you have both on both cards just in case anything goes wrong. The name of the game is redundancy. So this isn't a direct quote, I am paraphrasing. If a camera gives you the ability to shoot losslessly compressed RAW, he says do that because the files are smaller. So yes, if you shoot compressed RAW, it's going to be a smaller file. Now a lot of cameras allow you to shoot what's called lossless RAW, which means you're not losing data, or at least that's what they tell you, but I personally still shoot at the highest RAW file po size possible with the no lossless. I shoot uncompressed RAW in the highest bit rate that it will allow me to do because I want all the data even if it takes up more space because I really feel that you probably are losing some details. And when I talked to some, uh, some of the people at Sony, they gave me an education on what's happening in their compressed files even if it does say lossless. They say you may lose some details in the shadow areas. Now, if there's any chance of losing any data, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to lose any data whatsoever. That's why I always shoot uncompressed RAW at the highest bit rate possible. I spend all this money on the camera. I want to make sure I get the best file possible. So that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts on Tony's video about RAW versus JPEG and why he's shooting more JPEGs and going in each step of the way and commenting on the quotes that I didn't agree with. Now there are things that I agreed with in the video, especially when he said, raw files are so amazing. That's what was so weird about the video is he talks about how amazing raw files are while saying, well, if it's an important shot or if it's gonna have, if the shot may have more dynamic range, then I'm gonna shoot that raw. It's just shoot, shoot raw. My recommendation and my suggestion because there are no definitives in this world, is I suggest that you shoot RAW. And if you're not comfortable with shooting RAW, then shoot RAW plus JPEG and save those RAW files till you're more comfortable with them. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna continue to shoot those RAW files into the future when you realize how much data there is and how much better the files are going to look. And remember, when you're going out to shoot photos, it may be the most important picture that you ever take, so that is not an excuse to shoot JPEG because you're shooting unimportant images. If you're shooting unimportant images, then why shoot them at all?
So that, that's my take. What do you guys think? Leave some comments down below. I thank you guys very much for watching this. I hope you found it to be informative and you learned something and you got something out of it. If you want to check out one of my latest videos, go ahead and click up on the screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, share this on Facebook, like, comment, do all of that stuff. I appreciate you guys watching Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.